Hello. In this video, we are going to look at the Hopcroft CARP algorithm. We will take a look at the practical operation of the algorithm and then briefly look at its time complexity. The Hopcroft CARP algorithm solves the maximal matching problem in a bipartite graph. A bipartite graph is a graph, being a supplied set of vertices and edges, for which the set of vertices can be split into two subsets, x and y, such that no vertex is in both x and y and edges only connect from vertices in x to vertices in y, or vice versa. Edges can never connect from x to x or y to y. A matching is a set of edges from a given set of available edges in which no two edges share a vertex. For unweighted graphs, a maximal matching is a matching which contains the maximum number of possible edges. For weighted graphs, a maximal matching is a matching for which no other matching has a higher total weight for edges within the matching. The hopcroft karp algorithm was published by John Hopcroft and Richard Karp in 1973. It is an iterative algorithm which takes an existing bipartite graph and matching and will increase the number of edges in the matching unless it is already maximal. The algorithm can therefore be applied repeatedly until it fails to increase the size of the matching, and thus reaches a maximal matching. For this explanation, the two halves of the graph will be referred to by the set of nodes U and V for the left and right sets of vertices respectively. In each iteration, the algorithm creates a maximal set of minimum length augmenting paths between unmatched nodes in U and V. An augmenting path is a path connecting two unmatched vertices. These augmenting paths can then be used to increase the number of matchings in the graph. Let us take a look at how this works in practice by applying the algorithm to this bipartite graph. We will start our example without any initial matching, but since the algorithm is applied repeatedly to a matching, we can point out that the algorithm works even if an initial matching is supplied. The first step of the algorithm is to go through every unmatched vertex in U and, using breadth-first search, attempt to reach an unmatched vertex in V. We initially progress our search by travelling along the unmatched edges connected to the unmatched vertices in U. We keep track of the edges and vertices visited by creating a layered graph. Each individual layer contains vertices from either U or V, but never both. Nodes in the first layer are always currently unmatched. Nodes beneath the first layer may or may not already be matched. Here we have searched through one layer. After going down a layer in breadth first search, we look to see if we have found an unmatched vertex in V. The bottom layer of the layering graph contains vertices, shown in orange, which represent unmatched nodes in V. We have therefore reached at least one unmatched node from V. Since we have reached an unmatched node in V, we can stop at this level. The algorithm stops when it finds the first layer with an unmatched node in V, thus the augmenting paths at deeper levels will be ignored at this stage, and the paths found in a moment will be minimal. We now go through all the vertices in the bottom layer, adding all the unmatched ones to a new set F. We now go through the vertices in F and attempt to reach an unmatched vertex in U, using depth-first search. Starting at a vertex in F, here we choose V1, we move up the edges in the layering graph until we reach an unmatched vertex in U. With the layering graph of height 1, this is a trivial task. Once we have created our path, P, between a vertex in F and an unmatched vertex in U, we add all the currently unmatched edges in P to the matching M for the graph. We also remove any currently matched edges from P from the matching M. In this iteration of our example, there are no existing matching edges. We now remove all the vertices in the path from the layering graph and any edges connected to those vertices. We repeat this for every vertex in F.
Notice that vertices orphaned during the process above will not become part of the matching during this iteration. For example, v5 is orphaned when v4 is added to the matching. It will require another iteration of the algorithm before v5 becomes part of the matching. We have now finished the first iteration of the Hopcroft Car algorithm, and here is our graph with the new matchings. We repeat this process until we are unable to increase the number of matchings. The graph will then have a maximal number of matchings. In the last iteration, we increase the number of matchings, and therefore we apply the algorithm again. We begin as before by finding paths from unmatched vertices in U to unmatched vertices in V using breadth first search. After going down the first layer in the breadth first search, we have not reached an unmatched vertex in V. Therefore, we need to increase the depth of our breadth first search. Using the standard algorithm for augmenting paths, we need to alternate between an unmatched and matched edges. Therefore, the next edge in the breadth first search must be a matched edge, of which there will only ever be one available, since a matched vertex can only appear once in the matching edges. We carry on down another layer of breadth first search to go back to vertices in V, traversing through unmatched paths. Eventually, we hit an unmatched vertex in V. Our layering graph is now 5 deep, so that will be the minimum augmenting path at this stage. We add all found unmatched vertices in V to the set F, in this case just V5. Like before, we use a depth first search to find a path from a vertex in the set F to an unmatched vertex in U. This is straightforward in this example. Unlike in the previous iteration, the path P now contains currently matched edges. We remove these edges from the current matching. The three other currently unmatched edges are added to the matchings. Like before, we remove from the layering graph all the vertices in the path and any edges connected to them. Were there any more vertices in F, we would repeat this process for each of them. After we have iterated through all the vertices in F, we are left with our new graph. Like on the last iteration, we found an augmenting path, and increased the number of matchings. Therefore, we shall repeat the algorithm once more. We are unable to progress our breadth first search, as there are no more unmatched vertices in U. Therefore, we stop the algorithm as the current bipartite graph has a maximal matching. Next, we will look at the time complexity of the Hopcroft Carp algorithm. Each iteration of the Hopcroft Carp algorithm performs a breadth first search and a depth first search. These searches will inspect at most all the edges in the graph and therefore take a maximum time complexity of big O of the number of edges. Next we need to calculate the maximum number of iterations. Before we begin, we shall let m star be a maximum matching, and m be the matching after square root v iterations. It can be shown that for m, any augmenting path will have a length of at least root v. Therefore, using lemma 1, we can create the following equation. Rearranging this equation, we have the following. Therefore, after the first root v iterations, each subsequent iteration can increase the size of the matching by a maximum of root v vertices. Each iteration of the hopcroft carp algorithm increases the size of the matching by at least one vertex. Therefore, there can be at most root v further iterations. Thus, the total number of iterations is equal to the first root v iterations plus a further root v iterations, making at most two root v iterations. Thus, the hopcroft carp algorithm has a maximum time complexity of big O of the number of edges times the square root of the number of vertices. Thank you for watching, and we hope you now understand the hopcroft carp algorithm.